Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released PC version of Sony Ben's open world action adventure game, Days Gone, and see how it compares to the original PS4 version of the game released a little over two years ago. And if you're wondering why we're not looking at the PS5 version of the game instead, well that's because my PS5 is currently on its way back to Sony after completely bricking on me during my playthrough of Returnal last week. So my coverage for that game and other PS5 specific titles will be on hold for the next few weeks. But considering it's still close to impossible to even get a PS5, I reckon a lot of you today are still more interested in seeing how the PS4 version, or more specifically the PS4 Pro version, stacks up to what in theory should be the ultimate version of Days Gone played on a much more powerful PC. For this analysis, Days Gone is being played on a PC with its settings cranked up as high as possible at a native 4K resolution, whereas the original release is being played on a PS4 Pro, outputting and recorded on a 4K capable display. And after this comparison, if you want to learn more about Days Gone, be sure to check out my other videos on the game listed in the description below. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first going over some of the character models, starting with our lead protagonist, Deacon. At the standard camera distances, Deacon looks virtually identical between these two platforms. Things like the poly count, the texture maps, and all the small intricate details along his person, like various ties, straps, tears, and jewelry, all remain intact. Though, upon extremely close inspection, there are a few subtle changes that can be observed. Deacon's ring, for example, does have a higher poly count, helping to make the insignia more rounded than before. And while the texture maps are the same, they're far easier to make out thanks to the ability for the PC to lock its resolution at 4K, making things like the hairs along his beard and brow stand out more prominently, and other finer details like the zipper to appear with more depth. I also found that some of the weird checkerboarding artifacts found on the PS4 version are no longer a problem on PC, and extremely fine details like hair don't exhibit that same fuzzy pixelated look anymore. They've even addressed a very minor bug at the start of the game, where Deacon's pants appear clean during this cutscene, but then inexplicably are super dirty once the player is given control a second later, an issue I did not observe when playing on the PC. Even so, there's not very many improvements across the board with any of the characters in the game. So let's move on to our next section and talk about the environments. The environments are kind of more of the same situation. For the most part, it's an identical layout. All the geometry, the vegetation, and textured surfaces are all identical, but there are still some very minor changes thrown in that give the PC version a slight edge. First, there's been a nice bump to the LOD distance, reducing the amount of pop-in that you'll experience, mainly for plants and shadows that they project. Additionally, some areas have more vegetation than before, like these tall clumps of grass surrounding the tent at the bottom of the cliff. Along with this, there's also a lot more detail in certain scenes, like this piece of cloth lying in the road, or this fallen tree, that's brought out more by a mix of the higher 4K output resolution and just additional texture work in general. However, weirdly enough, there are a few exceptions to this, specifically this opening cinematic, where the PC version seems to look worse. The textures just don't seem to be loading in properly here, and it's a problem that seems to persist all throughout this particular cutscene. This problem never returned afterwards though, so it could just be a one-time bug. Other than those instances, the environments are more or less the same between versions, with only very minor increases to the level of detail on some of the surfaces, and very little added to the level environments to make them feel more dense. Next up we have lighting. Once again, very few changes here. The lighting design has been carried over exactly from the PS4 version, with near identical dynamic lighting effects, volumetrics, and reflective properties. There are a few very minor exceptions to this though, like this missing specular lighting effect on Deacon during one of the cinematics, and some scenes feeling like they have a slightly different brightness level to them, despite the brightness setting in-game matching up exactly, but it's otherwise the same. And the shadows are the same deal as well, with nothing but an increase to the sharpness for projections by the player and an increase to the shadow render distance for vegetation, especially along the sides of roads. There's still a bit of minor dithering that occurs underneath the hairline of characters during cutscenes. But because of the higher resolution, this too isn't quite as noticeable anymore, and feels a bit cleaned up in general. Next, we have effects. That again, really won't change your mind all that much in regards to Days Gone's visual design. The explosions, for example, function exactly the same as before, with identical particle density and emitted fireball effects, only with some slight differences due to the variability of the effect itself. The fire also hasn't been changed at all, and while it mostly looks great, 
It still does that annoying thing where sometimes the flames don't show, but still propagate and create ambient light that inevitably will light enemies on fire. It would have been nice to see this occasional bug addressed, but it too remains identical to the way it's handled on the PlayStation. So collectively, there's really not too much new with this release of the game when it comes to its visual design. The character models, the environments, lighting design, and effects, all these aspects have been brought over more or less the same. So if you've already played this game on PlayStation, or if you're playing it on PS5, then what's the point in playing it on PC now? Well, like with the Horizon Zero Dawn and Death Stranding PC ports, Days Gone's biggest achievement on the PC is its fantastic performance level, assuming you have the PC that can handle it at least. The game runs incredibly smooth in the builds that I've tested, with frame rates far exceeding the capabilities of even the PS5 version of the game. It's honestly the only thing that really bugged me about Days Gone, especially considering how accurate you need to be with the weapons to avoid getting overwhelmed. So, to now have the game running at 100 plus FPS, even during some of the most absolutely insane horde fights, makes the experience much more enjoyable. Which is why, instead of a sound comparison that wouldn't really make much sense considering it's using the same sound, I want to show a few brief clips of the game in action on both platforms, so you can see for yourself how much of a difference the increase in performance makes. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Days Gone feels right at home on the PC. What was already an absolutely gorgeous game on the PlayStation family of consoles is now looking just as good, if not better, with performance that makes it much more fluid and exciting. It's a confident port of an underappreciated PS4 original, though sure, it certainly isn't perfect, as there are a few minor gripes I've had with the game itself outside of the performance, which is why I recommend you check out my review of the game as well. But other than those few minor issues, this is a fantastic release that will hopefully be followed by more PlayStation exclusive titles brought to the PC sooner rather than later. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with Days Gone on the PC? Or were you expecting more? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.